Welcome back to the next part of the tutorial. Now, in this part, we'll just be looking at MeshLab. Now, MeshLab's a quite a powerful piece of software when working with meshes, and particularly when working with point cloud meshes. So it's got a vast range of functionality, and we'll be just covering some of the basics today. So just a quick rundown of the user interface. First up, we've got our projects. Then we can import our point clouds and meshes into all these projects. Um, and next tab you really have to be concerned with is your project tab. This will just show all your different point clouds and the meshes you generate as you generate them and enables you to select them, export them, shows you what you're working with roughly as well. So to start off in here, we've got our point cloud that we were working with before. And we're going to start looking at how, same as with Cloud Compare, if we didn't have a normal for this point cloud, we would generate them within MeshLab. So to do this, we go to filters, we go to our normals, curvatures, and orientations submenu, and we look at compute normals from point sets. So this tool works very similar to this, the one in Cloud Compare, and it just captures groups of points, creates planes, and uses those to calculate normals. So just opening up, you can just see the interface here. And we're looking at a neighbor number of 13. And if you just go down to this help button down the bottom and click on that, if you're uncertain about a function or what any of these numbers mean in terms of one of the various filters or functionalities in MeshLab, they're generally reasonably well explained. If you press help and it will open out this submenu that you can see here. And you can go through and just read up with all the different functionalities, what you're actually doing, what the math, some of the basics of the math behind it are before just in order to understand the, the functions of what you're doing. So just covering some of the submenus here. Um, neighbor number is reasonably self-explanatory. Smoothing iteration is also explained there. But worth explaining is viewpoint. Now because this scan is made up of multiple stations, the, you cannot set a singular viewpoint for it to use to assist it with the calculation of normals. So this becomes largely not useful for our scan. However, if you had a scan with just a singular station, this could, uh, if you set this up correctly, this can easily help you um, compute your normals much more accurately. Now now we can just go through that, we just press OK and that will just process down the bottom. Now that's completed, we'll just go through and do the next stage of the process. We could skip that because we already had normals in this point cloud, but it's good to show. So next thing we're going to do is start looking towards meshing. So to do that, we go filters, we go remeshing, simplification, and reconstruction. And then we go down to surface reconstruction, Hossian. So this menu is quite similar to the one we had in Cloud Compare. And if you press help, you can see all the options come up again. But for this exercise, we'll just press type the octree depth of 11. We set, set our solver divide to about 8 leave everything else at one and then we'll just press apply so that's all finished and as you can see how MeshLab generates these meshes it tends to be a little it tries to create a solid and a hole so in order to extract our face out of that mesh we go down to Filters, Selection, Select Faces with Edges 
longer than. And this just enables us to select all these larger faces and essentially remove them. So we'll just set this value to uh, 0 0.15, apply, that looks pretty good, and then simply press delete. As you can see here, it's still a little bit messy, it's quite difficult to read. So we'll just turn on double sided lighting here, so we just go render, view mode, double sided lighting and that will enable us to as you see here have a much better view as you can see this mesh has come through quite well uh, a little bit of issues around the bushes elements but that's that's very much expected so now the next thing is to do to clean up um, a lot of these edges. Through that we just set uh, a major view. Um, as you can see, this is a view from the left. The orientation of Mesh Lab is a little bit off. We'll just move that round, and then we just select faces using a rectangular region. Um, select up this top bit of data, and then we can just press delete. And then just do that one again. Same tool, same kind of system. Select and delete. Just back to that view again. We'll just clean everything up quite, quite quickly. Once we've cleaned it up, we can go through and start looking at doing some of the um, larger repair and cleaning functions. So first it will look up at closing some of these holes. So to do that, you just want to go to filters, repairing, remeshing and reconstruction, and then just close holes. Just go leave the default for the moment and just go apply. As you can see through that area we've got a couple of manifold edges. So to clean those up we just go to cleaning and repairing then we go down to select faces with non-manifold edges um, just select and then just press delete. So when it possibly look at cleaning up a few more of those elements and we can look at selecting going to the same filters menu, going cleaning and repairing, and go select non-manifold edges themselves and select non-manifold vertices. And we can delete all those as well. Once we've done that we can go and close those holes again. So just keep running some of these filters, trying to get a bit better, running in some, moving all these manifold edges and manifold faces, or to get the kind of best result we can. So once we've got that to a kind of state that we want it, we'll start uh, checking out the number of faces that we have in the model, firstly. 
And one of the big things about taking some of these models into various CAD suites or using them for a lot of purposes, if you really have very large numbers of excess faces, you can start really slowing down computers and processes. So it's quite a good idea to simplify this as much as we can. And we can generally do a pretty good job to get a lot of these face count downs without losing much fidelity in the mesh. What we're going to look at doing is applying a quadratic edge decimation, which is in filters, the reconstruction menu, and then quadratic edge decimation. So we just really want to probably roughly halve the number of faces we have at this stage. Again, if you go to the help menu, it will tell you what all the different options mean. Um, and then we just want to select the planar surfaces. And then we just want to go apply. So we can see here we've uh, half the number of faces there and we still haven't lost much texture or much detail and in fact we might run that one again. So we just go back into quadratic edge decimation and then just press apply. That's come through much quicker this time. And finished and still a little bit more, but we were vastly reduced the number of faces. We've quartered the number of faces we have on this model now. And that's become much smoother to navigate and move around. Down to 1.7 million faces, which is pretty fine. So now we've got that all finished, we're going to look at applying textures. So the first thing to do here is to bring back up our point cloud, just to see kind of what we'll be looking at. Then we want to go to filters, sampling, vertex, attribute, sampling. So our source mesh is our point cloud and then we're transferring our color onto our Poisson mesh there. So just click apply and we're transferring vertex color. So apply then close and we shut that down. So we just go and we'll turn the color on per vertex. And as you can see here, there you go, we've got a lovely colored mesh. All right. Thanks guys for watching. This is, is pretty much as far as we'll go today. Um, our next tutorial will cover kind of taking the mesh in towards a solid format. Thanks very much for watching and I'll talk to you guys next time.